Good evening. Welcome to another live stream all about women's health and hormones. Just getting everything set up here a little bit. I'm going to share this in a couple of different groups, so bear with me. And first I've got to see myself to be able to do so. <laughs> Hi, how is everyone tonight? Say hey in the comments. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know what you're up to. Uh, we'll get started in just a, a minute or two. Oh, isn't that such a bugger? Having weird connection issues here. Let's see if I can get this properly working. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to bring up Facebook so I can share this into the sisterhood group. And of course, the internet on my laptop is not cooperating. I'm going to grab my um, iPad just one second. Sorry about the delay, guys. All right. Well, let's see if I can bring up Facebook on my iPad. That would be pretty cool. That's weird. It's saying I have no internet connection. But I'm talking to you, right? If, if you can hear me and see me okay, then let me know in the comments. Um, but that might not, that's probably running on uh, not my Wi-Fi. <laughs> All right. Come on, iPad. Here we go. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to just share this quickly. Um, good. I'm glad I could get that to work. Here we go. Sisterhood. Perfect. Uh -uh. Oops, weight gain, moodiness, and bad periods. All things we're going to be chatting about tonight. All right. I'm just going to make sure that that's in the group okay, and we'll kind of get started. Um, so we're going to talk about estrogen dominance tonight. It might be something you're familiar with. It might not be. Um, it's a really, really common hormonal imbalance, but um, not many people truly understand what it means. And so they think, I don't have this just because, you know, I, my labs say I don't have high levels of estrogen, so I'm not estrogen dominant. Um, but that is not necessarily the case, and I want to help you um, understand that a little bit better. Let me just make sure that this is all good. Okay, perfect. Welcome, welcome, good evening, hello. I'm gonna be trying to monitor this from my cell phone and iPad as much as possible because my um, laptop doesn't seem to be working so well, which is weird. Uh, I'm gonna restart it while we chat. How's everyone's week going so far? Tuesday, we're almost halfway through. I hope everyone's having a good week. It's been rainy here where I am. Uh, quite a bit. Wow, it is dark. I wonder if I can... No, that doesn't really help. You guys will have to deal with the darkness <laughs> for today. Um, oh, that's a little better. So estrogen dominance. I'm curious, anyone watching, do you know that you are estrogen dominant? dominant? Is this a term that you've heard before? Are you familiar with it? What do you think estrogen dominance actually is? What do you guys think? Estrogen dominance. Do you have it? Do you know what it is? I want to wait another minute or two before I actually dive in on a bunch of this stuff, um, just in case we have any late comers. So I want you guys to talk to me first. What's going on? What are, you, what are you thinking about this topic? We're talking about in relation to weight gain, in relation to moodiness and bad periods, of course. Um, estrogen dominance. Not something that your doctor is likely to talk about. Yes, you have it, Tina. Okay, cool. I'll hopefully help shed a little bit of light about what this is and how you can help yourself when we get started. Um, I've just restarted my laptop. Let's see if the internet's going to work for me right now. That would be great. What is going on here? That's weird. Okay, so last week on the live stream, now I see we have a few more people joining us. Um, 
I did a, a, a pull of some Oracle cards. So the card deck that I have is this one. Um, the Goddess Guidance Oracle cards from Doreen Virtue. And it seemed to go over pretty well last time. Um, oh, that's a bugger. No internet. That's so crazy. Okay. Um, and I like to use these cards to kind of help guide me a little bit in what I'm doing in my life. So I pull one of these cards every week. And whatever goddess I happen to pull is kind of the message I take that I'm supposed to have for the week. Uh, and I try to follow that. So, for example, personally this week I pulled the goddess uh, Mawu, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, she's an African goddess and she's basically saying that I am uh, should be participating in some environmental um, stuff. Helping with environmentalism, doing my part to, to be really light with my, my touch on the earth. So I've been trying to do that a little bit this week. So I want to pull a card for you guys. Um, I know that last week uh, a couple of you really thought that this the card that I pulled hit home for you and it was kind of a nice message. And so I want to continue that um, because I really like doing that for myself and it's a really, I find a grounding practice, really de-stressing, um, really helpful in making decisions or uh, guiding the way that you want to live your life for the next week or the next month or whatever you're pulling the cards for. Um, at the end of last year, I pulled a card for every month of this year as well. So I have a monthly card and then I do a weekly. Um, so we'll see what we get tonight and then we'll talk about estrogen dominance. Um, I just want to make sure these are shuffled up good. So let's see, ladies, uh, what goddess we pull this evening. And I'll read you the little blurb that comes in the little companion book. Uh, all right. Oh, interesting. This is perfect for tonight, I think, but I have to look up how to properly pronounce her name <laughs> because I'm pretty sure I'm going to butcher it. Let's see. Okay, so Ishel or Ishel is how it's pronounced. Here's the card. And I know this is probably backwards for you, but there it is. There she is. Medicine woman. Medicine woman. Isn't that interesting? So on the card it says, you are a channel for divine healing power. So we're talking about healing our bodies tonight. So this is really perfect um, to read what she, the message that Ishelle has for us. Commanding power is not the same as demanding it. Demanding comes from a childlike place akin to a tantrum based upon the fear that it might be withheld. Commanding is based upon the sure and steady knowledge that you are a part of the great spirit's grace and wisdom. You're a lightning rod that can conduct the power. Simply connect to the power through unyielding clarity of your thought processes. Don't waver for a moment in your sure and steady decision to be a conduit of the power that already resides within you. Connect to the even bigger source and allow it to amplify your natural power. In this way, you're a steady connector of the infinite, from the infinite to the infinite. In other words, it's all spirit around you, through you, and to whomever you're healing. Hey Heather, how's it going? Nice to have you on the live stream tonight. We're just doing our card um, for the week. Ishelle is what we picked this week, Medicine Woman. So the various meanings of this card, you're a healer, you're being healed, this situation and or your loved one is being healed. Honor your healing knowledge and abilities. Learn about healing teach the healing arts and start or continue your healing practice. Interesting. Isn't that so interesting that, um, that's what I chose tonight for you ladies who are listening all about being healers. So you're being healed. Ishel knows, trust me, these things, they know, um, these goddesses are here for you. Whether you believe they're actual people who existed in the past, or it's just a card that you're going to pull or whatever you believe. And to start or continue your healing practice. So if you've been looking for a nudge to get going on some things to help yourself feel better. Here's your, uh, 
Here's your light bulb moment. Here's your permission. Michelle, there we go. Interesting. Anyone have any thoughts on that one? Did that ring true for anyone who's watching here tonight? Or does that make you feel comforted to know that you're being healed and that you're being um, guided and supported? And of course, for me, I'm going to help teach those healing arts to you tonight. So estrogen dominance. Um, still no internet on my laptop. <laughs> But it looks like I have internet on my iPad. So there's a corresponding blog post that goes along with tonight's talk. Um, you can find it right now um, on the homepage of the Hormone Diva. It's, in, it's like the second one down, I think, on May 2nd today. Um, and it'll give you extra information that I might not talk about because I know sometimes we get off track with certain things. How's everyone doing? I see you guys are all watching. Talk to me. Um, I'm totally rocking like post yoga class hair tonight. Like if I tried to even put these <laughs> bangs all the way forward, it would not be a, um, it would not be pleasant for me, <laughs> but that's what happens when you fit stuff in where you can to take care of yourself, right? You do the thing and you get all sweaty and then you have to come on camera and that's real life and that's how we do it. All right, so you can feel free to check out that blog post, um, but we'll talk about most of the stuff that's going to be here. So first I want to say that um, millions and millions and millions of women out there are suffering with hormonal issues and they don't even know it. Um, they might think that what they're experiencing is normal in terms of um, symptoms. Hey, Kate, I'm so glad you made it. Did you get to see the card that I pulled before, the Oracle card? Interesting. Interesting. Oh, you read it. Fantastic, Tina. Fantastic. So if you have any questions about that, about what you read or anything I'm going to talk about, put it in the comments, right? I'll answer you as I go and to anyone watching, not just Tina. So glad you read it, though. That's awesome. Um, and we're suffering needlessly, right? So we think everything is normal. You know, this is a part of aging. This is part of being a woman. You go to your doctor. The doctor says your labs are normal. They say some people just have, you know, bad periods. Some people just are tired. Some people just are moody. Here's a pill, you know, whatever. Or here's a, a see you later and good luck kind of thing. Um, and it's really unfortunate. And I find a lot of the women who I work with and who I chat with in our lovely sisterhood community of divas, um, their symptoms can be managed with natural methods and it's important that you're aware of that and, and important that you're aware of what you need to be doing in order to balance this. Um, as you may be aware, I have hormonal imbalances myself. Um, so I have PCOS. I recently found out that I'm dealing with a bit of uh, hypothyroidism as well um, and some adrenal issues. And the PCOS especially, also the thyroid, um, at the root of it is estrogen dominance. If you have PCOS or uh, you have really horrible periods, maybe you've been gaining weight, especially if you're gaining it um, on the back, like under the bra area, uh, on the belly, especially the lower belly, um, hip thighs, butt, if those things are all growing exponentially and you can't figure it out, um, estrogen dominance may be a result of that. Moods are a huge part of this. Uh, let's just go into the symptoms instead of me just rambling off here. Oh, uh, first, there was one other thing I wanted to say before we get into the symptoms. What the heck is estrogen dominance anyway? What do you guys think it is? What is your definition uh, that you're aware of? Estrogen dominance. What do you What do you guys think, ladies? I don't know why my internet's not working there. That's so weird. It's working on my iPad, connected to my house's Wi-Fi. So what do you guys think about estrogen dominance? Do you think it's too much estrogen? Do you think it's um, something only for like younger women? Do you think uh, that it only affects uh, periods as far as the symptoms? Um, Elevates say it's brutal. 
Kate Willow, estrogen dominance equals misery. Absolutely. Too much estrogen, Angela. Okay. So you guys are, are right, but don't also have the whole picture so far that I'm seeing. Um, so yes, it's absolutely brutal and it's total misery. <laughs> and that's why we're talking about it so that you guys can uh, help yourselves to feel better. And too much estrogen is part of it. But there's actually, it's not always too much estrogen. There's three different ways that estrogen dominance can manifest in your body. The first being the obvious excess levels of estrogen, so really high. So if you were to have blood work uh, at a certain time in your cycle, then you might your doctor might say that your estrogen is kind of off the charts or it's above range or whatever the case may be. So that's one, but that's not the whole picture, right? That's usually where people stop when they think about estrogen dominance. Um, but the, the next uh, criteria or possibility when it comes to estrogen dominance manifesting in the body is having normal levels of estrogen and low levels of progesterone. Um, I find that this is extremely common. And this is a lot of the women who... Um, get the blood tests and they're told everything is normal. This is often that one. Or it's also possible to have low estrogen and be estrogen dominant if your progesterone is basically tanked. So really, estrogen dominance is simply an imbalance in progesterone to estrogen or estrogen to progesterone. So you can have normal estrogen and be estrogen dominant. You can have low estrogen and be estrogen dominant. So if you're perimenopausal or you're going through menopause, you can still be estrogen dominant. Uh, it's all in the ratio and progesterone when it comes to hormones. That's the first thing that's going to be stolen, if you will, um, when, they're, when your body's trying to make hormones. Progesterone's going to go down the tubes in favor of other hormones like estrogen, like your stress hormone cortisol. Um, so there's a lot of things going on here, and uh, it doesn't necessarily mean just excess estrogen. Has anyone been told their estrogen is normal? Does anyone know that they have low progesterone, in fact? Still no internet, eh? That's so crazy. Good thing that it's working on my other devices so we can do this tonight. So does anyone have, like, legit blood work? That said they were good to go. <laughs> You're low on progesterone, Tina? Yeah. So basically, almost every uh, manifestation of estrogen dominance has to do with low progesterone. Uh, you've been told yours is normal. Yeah, Lizelle too. Heather, yes, but it's not. Absolutely. And interesting, you know, the... The lab ranges or values that they use are essentially arbitrary. And so same thing with hypothyroidism. A lot of women are hypothyroid and don't know it because they fall within the ranges, but that still doesn't mean that there's nothing wrong. Oh, I'm missing some of these. Kate says no blood work, but the gynecologist said estrogen dominance is the reason for fibroids. Absolutely. It sure is. Your doctor was right on that one. Deb says, I have low progesterone and am on natural progesterone. Fantastic. Are you finding that you're getting results from the, the bioidentical progesterone? That can be a really, really good thing. Uh, Tina says you're, that she's thankful she has a great gynecologist. Totally. They're hard to come by. Mine is not good. My family doctor sucks. <laughs> it's a good thing that I know things. Um, because there wouldn't be any help from them. Although my naturopath is pretty good. Um, so basically what I'm trying to say is it's possible for women of all ages to be estrogen dominant. It's totally possible to be estrogen dominant and have your doctor tell you you aren't. Or to have quote unquote normal lab values and you still feel like shit. So let's talk about some of the symptoms because estrogen dominance manifests in the body in certain ways and creates certain conditions and symptoms and signs. And that's really the best way to kind of tell what's going on. If any of you have done my hormone quiz, you might already know this, but I'm going to even do some more detailed symptoms. So if you're someone who has excessively high estrogen and low to normal progesterone, <clears throat> you may be experiencing 
sore, swollen, and tender breasts, especially prior to your menstrual cycle. Breast growth beyond puberty, um, taking away like pregnancy and childbirth and, and breastfeeding from the equation, but otherwise, are your boobs growing still? Uh, estrogen is responsible for breast growth and development. So if you have really high levels, your boobs are just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. If you're experiencing swelling in your hands or your fingers, your, your legs or the ankles, if you notice, especially before your periods that you're getting like swollen ankles, those cankles, right? You just, you know, your socks hurt uh, or whatever, or, or for the fingers, like your, uh, your rings are too tight or you can't get them on, for example, high levels of estrogen. Menstrual cramps. Anyone experience cramps? Who's on the live stream tonight? I'm going to raise my hand. I get cramps on the first day of my period. Um, I used to get cramps for the seven to 10 days I was bleeding at a time years ago. Um, now it's just on the first day and it's quite minor. I don't usually need anything for it, but some tea. Anyone here getting menstrual cramps? <laughs> I'm assuming that's a yes, that crazy angry face that just came across the screen. Deb says, since perimenopause, now I get cramps all the time. Your progesterone tanks. It starts going down at the age of 35. Um, but once you get into perimenopause, you know, 40, 45, 50, depending on, you know, when you're going to actually go through menopause, it varies for a lot of women. Your progesterone declines drastically. Um, Angela, oh my God, yes, and they are brutal on the first day, totally. Heather, me for sure. Kate, cramps are brutal, absolutely. Um, Tina says, when I had a period, I had awful cramps, for sure. It's the horrible, the worst thing. Um, and, and all we're offered is pain medication and birth control pills from traditional medical philosophies, which is unfortunate. But if you fix estrogen dominance, you'll get rid of your cramps. Uh, impatience. Are there any super impatient ladies for no good reason out there where you find that you just don't have the patience that you used to? Or have you been called too bossy or nagging? Those are all signs of too much estrogen. Interesting, isn't it? So that's kind of the first scenario. I want to try and well, I don't think it's going to work, is it? If you open the YouTube app and you put something on it and then you close the app, it doesn't continue to play, does it? I had this all set up on my laptop, but then my <laughs> my internet went out um, because I wanted to play some soft music in the background tonight, but I guess that's not going to happen next time, <laughs> next week. <laughs> Uh, and so here's the second scenario, normal to high estrogen and low, low progesterone, absent periods, amenorrhea, as it's called, um, your periods just don't show up, irregular periods, so you can't really predict when they're going to come, they do eventually, um, you know, within a month or two or whatever, but they, they're very irregular. If you experience clots. In your menstrual flow, any clotters out there? I used to have horrible clots um, when I was a teenager, but I don't get any clotting anymore. Um, my personal period flow, if you, well, hey, we're talking about hormones, so this is not TMI, is um, bright red and perfect. No clots, um, good amount, all of that, that's what you want. Sore tender breasts again. Does anyone get the boob pain? Tell me you guys get the boob, the boob pain. This was something that I actually I'm still working on. It's almost completely gone. But when it was at its worst, I used to have boobs so sore I couldn't even touch them. Even walking down the stairs with a full on bra would hurt. And I would have to like hold them in place going down the stairs. Like really horrible sore boobs. Clots were huge for you, Tina. Yeah. Today it's terrible for you, Heather, the boobs. <laughs> totally. Um, anyone out there with fibrocystic breasts or 
Uh, I think we had someone say they had fibroids already. Was that you, Kate? And endometriosis? Endo, fibroids, fibrocystic breasts? All symptoms of estrogen dominance. Conditions of estrogen dominance, if you will. Especially those. PCOS as well, but PCOS also has the, the androgens like testosterone and insulin more involved. But endofibroids, um, fibrocystic breasts, ovarian cysts on their own, um, hugely influenced by estrogen, which is what causes these tissues to proliferate. Pr proliferate. <laughs> it's been a long day. And then the third scenario, if you have low estrogen and extremely low progesterone, like your progesterone's in the tanker. So these are for my perimenopausal and menopausal ladies, mostly but not always, memory loss, depression, hot flashes or night sweats, uh, you're being treated for endo but not diagnosed. Yeah, the only way to actually diagnose um, endometriosis is through surgery, a laparoscopy, because the, the endo tissue does not show itself on ultrasound or other scans. So they actually have to do surgery to, um, to diagnose. So sometimes they don't and they'll just assume that you do based on symptoms. Kylie asks, acne near the ears and cheeks. I would say probably not, but maybe if you're having all the other symptoms. Hormonal acne usually manifests here along the jawline, on the neck, your chest, and your back. If you're having acne on other areas of your body, so if it's like more in the center of your cheeks, if you're having acne on the forehead, the nose, um, a bit on the upper lip, that's usually digestive issues uh, and liver sluggishness. But isn't it interesting that the liver, if your liver is not functioning well, is actually a huge cause of estrogen dominance. And we'll talk about that. Um, constipation, possibly. That's usually more of a, um, a liver or a bowel issue or thyroid. Oh, hearts, 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 and thumbs up. Are those all coming right now or is, or is my thing just slow? <laughs> And showing me like a million at once. Um, other symptoms of low estrogen, estrogen dominance, vaginal dryness, low libido, chronic fatigue, insomnia, sagging breasts. Are your boobs starting to sag all of a sudden? And you're like, holy shit, I'm too young for this. <laughs> uh, quick weight gain, bloating, and absent or irregular periods. And it's interesting that... You can go back and forth between these things. So you might notice at certain times in your cycle, like the first half, for example, um, you have more of the symptoms of excessively high estrogen, like the um, impatience, for example, um, uh, the water retention, whatever. And then at a different time in your cycle, you might have symptoms of the low estrogen. So um, the vaginal dryness, low libido type stuff. Constipation though, Deb, I would definitely think about your diet first. Water is number one. Do you get enough? Number two, do you get enough fiber? Number three, do you get enough fats? And if you check, check, check to all three, then maybe something else is going on. And there's a lot of other general symptoms of estrogen dominance. So things like accelerated aging, hypoglycemia, so if you feel hangry between meals, you get really irritable when you haven't eaten for a few hours or dizzy, whatever. Um, Premenopausal bone loss, so it's uh, typical, although not normal, to, to lose bone mineral density after menopause, but if you're having that before. Thyroid dysfunction, excess estrogen or estrogen dominance interferes with thyroid hormone. Uterine cancer and fibroids, breast cancer, polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS. I know there's a lot of you in the group. Ovarian cysts and ovulation. So if you're not ovulating, uh, low progesterone or what might be called the luteal phase defect. So if the second half of your cycle is not at least, usually they say the, the lowest would be like 10, 10 to 12 days. If it's less than that, luteal phase defect. Cervical dysplasia hair loss, infertility, irritability, mood swings, PMS, PMDD, sluggish metabolism, fat deposition in your hips, your thighs, your belly, especially the lower belly um, at the, the belly button and below, and the back. 
gallbladder disease as well. Excessively high libido, Marcella, testosterone, perhaps, high levels of testosterone, or just really a healthy sex drive? Like, how do you know it's excessive? It's normal to have a healthy libido and, and feel that on a daily basis. I wouldn't call that excessive. Any questions about any of that so far? Any of the symptoms or the definition? I want to switch gears and talk about how you get this way. So where the heck did this estrogen dominance come from in the first place, right? Because, yeah, now you know what it is and you know, okay, maybe I have a ton of the symptoms. Uh, Kylie wants to know what foods to avoid. We'll talk about that um, near the end of this live stream. Your significant other has complained. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Significant other complaining of too high libido. That's crazy. If you're okay with it and you can like take care of yourself, if, you're, if your significant other is not into it, then that's awesome. I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> Unless it becomes bothersome, right? Then see your doctor. But testosterone is a possibility. Oh, he's 13 years younger and he can't keep up? I'm, I'm sorry. That's a horrible thing. To say, uh, how does it affect ovulation? Horrible pain around ovulation. A lot of women have pain or sensation around ovulation. It's called middle schmerz. Um, having a little bit of sensation or mild discomfort is not abnormal. Usually this is the sign that the egg is bursting through the follicle because the egg is kept in a little sac until it matures. And then the ovulation, the sac bursts open, the egg comes out, goes down the fallopian tube, um, and so some women can actually feel that. Um, if you have horrible pain around ovulation, then you might be developing cysts. Um, so for example, uh, if you have these follicles with the eggs in them and they mature, but your hormones aren't able to uh, just get you over the edge to burst that follicle open and have the egg released, it will form a cyst and it will stay in your ovary. And once this happens several times, then you can get what they call like a string of pearls along your ovaries, the lots of cysts. Um, women with PCOS often have this on ultrasound. I didn't, um, but it's one of the diagnostic, one of the three major diagnostic criteria. Um, and how does it specifically affect ovulation? So estrogen is highest in the first half of your cycle. It's necessary to get your womb ready in case uh, the egg becomes fertilized. It's necessary to mature that follicle with the egg in it so that it can reach ovulation. And if you have excessively high or too low estrogen, this will not happen. So the egg, fo the follicles just won't mature or they will and they'll form cysts, various things like that. And if you do not ovulate, you do not have a real period, period. <laughs> um, it's just a breakthrough bleed. If you don't know for sure that you're ovulating and you're having a bleed, like if you're on birth control, for example, that's not a real period, FYI. Does that answer your question? Um, so let's talk about how did we get estrogen dominance. Number one, toxicity. We live in a very toxic world. Women who take birth control and hormone replacement therapy pee and it gets flushed into our water systems and the hormones, sorry, but our, our, our filter systems that our governments have do not filter out those hormones. So if you do not have filtered clean water, you will probably be getting some hormones from there. Other dietary sources of the toxins include um, produce that has a lot of pesticides on it. So check out the, uh, the Clean 15 and uh, the Dirty Dozen so that you know where to spend your organic produce dollars. If you're eating commercially raised meats, so if you're buying beef, which if you buy grass-fed is fantastic and healthy, and I actually made myself a grass-fed ground beef hash for breakfast this week, and it was amazing. But if you're having commercially raised meats, then you will be having loads of toxins coming into your body, especially the red meats, but also in poultry and things like that. Um, processed foods, of course, because they have loads and loads of um, chemicals that are added that disrupt with your hormones. If there was any plant matter in there at all, it's usually GMO, like soy, wheat, corn, things like that. 
So those, those are the dietary sources of toxicity. Where else can we get toxicity from? Where do the toxins come from? What do you guys think? I, I want you guys to, to share your knowledge because I'm willing to bet, especially because I picked that Ishel card at the beginning of this, that you guys have some innate healing knowledge. And I want to hear what you say. Personal care items. Fantastic, Deb. Absolutely. Anything you use on your body. This includes your makeup, deodorant, shampoo, conditioner, hairspray, um, body lotions, body scrubs, um, uh, uh, shaving foam, all of that stuff. Makeup. Absolutely, Marcella. Yes, Kylie. Everybody says beauty products. Absolutely. So do you buy natural beauty products? Are you helping reduce your toxic load by buying natural beauty products? You can hit up the Environmental Working Group website. Um, toothpaste, Chris, amazing. That's a perfect one. Toothpaste, absolutely. Um, so ewg.org, the Environmental Working Group, they actually have a database where you can search by brand and product to see how shitty your product is or how good it is. Um, perfect. You guys are getting the good stuff. Marcella says I don't wear makeup. Even better. I generally don't through the day, but I put on a little bit of foundation and lip color before coming on tonight so I didn't look quite like a zombie. We have to do like a pajama party one of these, I think. Would you guys like that? Not that it matters, you're not on camera, but I would love that. Cookware, Tina, fantastic suggestion. Cookware is absolutely true. That non-stick cookware is very bad for your health, by the way. Stainless steel is the best, um, and cast iron as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming that, yeah, with all the, the explanation points is for the pajama party. <laughs> so can I just like come on here in my pajamas from now on? That would be amazing. Maybe we can do one like a little later sometime, like eight or nine or something. And just hang out in our PJs with a cup of tea. Room deodorizers. Yes, Deb, absolutely. So anything that you're putting in your environment, right? So not just on your body, but in your environment. <laughs> Now everyone wants to do a pajama party. That's awesome. Uh, I will do it. Wine, if you want. Pff, of course. Red wine. Red wine for the antioxidants. I'm not a wine drinker. I'm, I'm not really a booze girl. But if that's what you like, then that's what you like. And you got to do that. Um, this is not about deprivation. We're just chatting. <laughs> so deodorizers. Other things that you might be putting in your environment. So cleaning um, supplies, for example, your bathroom cleaner, your window cleaner, um, whatever the heck you're using to wash your floors, all of that stuff. Tina's already in her PJs. Amazing. Portuguese red is the best. I'll take your word for it, Marcella. Um, other things. Your, so a lot of the things that we were talking about as far as toxicity are things that we can control, which is fantastic. I'm glad we started there. So the food and water that we intake, the things that we put on our bodies, um, personal care, makeup, all of this, the things that we have in our environment. So are we using those room deodorizers like Deb said? Are we spraying all that chemical shit in the air, right? Are we using um, harsh chemicals to clean our homes? Oh, Monica too with the PJs. I'm so jealous, you guys. <laughs> I'll be totally honest. I'm wearing yoga pants below this top. And I'm wearing one of those tank tops that has like a shelf bra because after dinner, the bra comes off. Anyone else? Isn't that the best part of the day? Um, so what about the things that we cannot control? Because they're worth mentioning as well so that you can get an idea of why it's important to control what we can in order to help our estrogen. Um, pollution, right? We can't help. For the most part, I mean, we can do our small steps, but we, we can't help the mass pollution that's coming out in our air. We have no, no um, control over that whatsoever. The makeup site, um, uh, ewg.org, it's the environmental working group. And on there, you'll see their beauty, whatever database thing. Exercise. Mm-hmm. Mom has uterine cancer. What food should she avoid? She is on Femera. Um, I, I can't say specifically for your mom, Kylie, because I don't work with her and, and cancer is not to be taken lightly. Um, 
if she knows that estrogen is a part of this, she'll want to eat an anti-estrogen estrogenic diet for the most part, if that's doctor approved. Um, and we'll talk about that. I promise we'll get to it. Um, oh, one other thing we can control I didn't mention is plastics. Who's using a lot of plastics? We all do, right? Plastic bags, plastic water bottles, blah, 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 right? They contain chemicals that interrupt our hormones. They're called endocrine disruptors. And um, uh, BPA, bisphenol A, is a big one that you've probably heard about. Um, and I'm saying this and I'm totally drinking out of a plastic mug tonight. <laughs> but you know what? Um, that's okay. I usually don't, and, and that's fine. I didn't even think about that ahead of time. That's hilarious. Uh, so all of those kind of things. Mason jars, yes. Glass, right? Replace with glass, absolutely. Um, poor diet, so we talked about that. Um, yeah, I think we talked about most of those things that are food-based. Um, the soy controversy, I'm not going to get into as much tonight. There's um, research out there that shows soy is extremely beneficial for estrogen issues. And there's other studies that show that it's extremely harmful. Um, usually the studies that show it's beneficial are from traditional cultures who eat those foods on a regular basis versus like our Western culture. So keep that in mind um, in regards to soy. Uh, Mason jaws. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome, Marcella. Um, the one last thing that I wanted to mention that's contributing to estrogen dominance is, of course, the medications. Birth control, the pill, the patch, the shot, the IUD, and hormone replacement therapy. All of these things contribute to estrogen dominance, and many women um, have permanent, if not extremely long-lasting effects of these medications after they come off. Oh, you're welcome. You're so welcome. Um, so... Getting off birth control is possible and it's important for your health if that's something that you want to do. Um, it's really, really difficult to balance your hormones while you're taking synthetic ones. And there are ways to prevent pregnancy without using hormonal birth control. Of course, there's the barrier methods, condoms and the like. Um, but my favorite is the fertility awareness method where you track um, signals that your body gives you like your basal body temperature and your cervical mucus and the position of your cervix and how you feel um, and it can be just as effective if you're trained how to do it properly um, to prevent you from getting pregnant or help you to get pregnant. Marcella, progesterone cream. Yep. If it is bioidentical progesterone cream made from wild yam, so it'll usually say like progesterone USP, capital USP, this is great for estrogen dominance. If it is a synthetic progesterone from your medical doctor, um, sometimes it's called progestin, then no, this is not the best idea. I mean, it, I'm, it's certainly better than taking something with estrogen, but it's still a synthetic hormone. The bioidentical matches what we have in our bodies a lot better, so it's something to consider. So that's how we get there. That's how we get all these crazy symptoms. And remember that these things build up over our entire lives and even before. They have found um, hundreds, if not thousands of chemicals in the cord blood of newborn babies. So we're getting it right from birth, from before birth. So, so don't feel guilt. Don't feel like you brought this on yourself. For one thing, you didn't know. For another thing, this has been going on way longer than you could have imagined. And so when you feel like you're not having the progress that you want in your health, Remember that it has been years and years and years of these things building up and it's going to take time. This is the long game if you're trying to help yourself from the root cause. Uh, Primarin, is that a progesterone? I thought that was an estrogen. I'm going to look it up. Oops. Oh, I can't. <laughs> No, no internet. I forgot. It's still not working. Well, that's annoying. Um, so let's talk about what we can do about this. What do you guys think? What can you do about estrogen dominance? Based on the causes that we talked about, right? 
the the medications, the 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 diet toxins, the you know all of the above, right? The environment. List me off some things right now that you can do to help yourself with estrogen dominance. What do you guys think? While you're typing, I want to give you this awesome trick to make sure that you keep yourself hydrated. So I have this thing. It's called a carafe. And I right now I have hot water with lemon and lime in it. Um, but you can put brewed tea in it. And, and basically it keeps things hot for like six to eight hours or so. And I keep this thing full. Um, just because I'm not a huge fan of drinking cold water all the time. Especially when you're dealing with hormones. Um... You can just pour from it all day. So that's kind of what's been going on here. Uh, Kylie says, avoid processed foods. Fantastic. So you're all going to do this, right? You're going to avoid those things. Processed foods, anything that comes in a bag, box, or a carton. Anything that comes from a fast food restaurant. Eat to heal. Fantastic. Chris, absolutely. Kate, exercise, yoga, diet, avoid chemicals in the environment. Take Vitex, progesterone cream. Chris, meditation. Amazing. These are all great suggestions. Are you guys doing them? Try to get eight hours of sleep. Sleep is so important. For weight gain especially, if you are gaining weight and part of it is estrogen dominance or whatever the cause is of your sleep or of your weight gain, excuse me, if you are not sleeping well, you're fucked. <laughs> Essentially, your body needs that time in order to lose weight healthfully. Yoga helps you a lot. Great, Monica. That's amazing. Marcella says cruciferous vegetables. Thank you so much for saying that one. I have a whole blog post on how to eat more cruciferous vegetables on my website um, because it's so important. And why? Because they help your liver to detoxify, because they help to remove excess and harmful estrogens from your body, right? These vegetables, so broccoli, cauliflower, kale, cabbage, um, turnip and turnip greens, uh... Brussels sprouts, there's so many. Um, can I talk about Vitex? Yep. I can't sleep. I think my adrenals are shot and this is, is this related? Absolutely. Are you stressing? Long-term chronic stress? Sedentary lifestyle? Poor diet? Any of these factors for you, Deb? These will affect your adrenals. And if your adrenals are not functioning, guess what's going to happen? Your body is going to steal the building blocks it uses to make progesterone which keeps estrogen in check in order to make your stress hormones cortisol and others. Um, so you're going to end up estrogen dominant with low progesterone. So yes, it's absolutely related. Vitex, Heather, to answer your question, Monica says ma magnesium will help you. Magnesium, uh, minerals so important. Yes, magnesium. Absolutely. Blood sugar balance, hormone balance, mood balance, good sleep. Uh, relaxes the muscles, relaxes the nervous system. Vitex. Sorry, Heather. Let's let's talk about this. I actually have a whole blog post on the website as well about this, and I think we've done a live stream, so I'll just talk about it briefly. Vitex does not directly increase progesterone, as some people think. Rather, it works on the brain in order to help signaling so that your body can signal your ovaries to produce more progesterone. Um, it doesn't work for everyone. I find with women who have PCOS... Uh, or estrogen dominance, it either works really well, and you have to take it for about three full menstrual cycles to tell. If it doesn't work at all by then, it's not for you. Um, it can raise certain hormones like LH, luteinizing hormone, and if this hormone is chronically high, as it is already in many women with PCOS uh, specifically, it can prevent ovulation and do the opposite of what you're trying to do with it. Um, so Vitex should be taken very carefully, you can certainly try it, but if it doesn't work after a few months, it's not for you. If you're on any kind of hormonal birth control or hormone replacement therapy, Vitex is not for you. It will interfere. What is the best magnesium? Um, glycinate is a fantastic one. If you have also a lot of muscle uh, discomfort or soreness, like if you have fibromyalgia, for example, things like that, you might want to try magnesium malate. If you also have heart problems like cholesterol, heart disease, you might want to try magnesium torate. But magnesium glycinate for everyday general use is fantastic. You can buy the citrate form, but it gives a lot of people loose stools if you take too much. 
And you might need a lot of magnesium, but might not be able to get as much as you need because you're pooping all the time because you're taking the wrong form. Um, so there we go. Uh, so those are all great suggestions. Um, the biggest thing that I wanted to make a point about as far as helping with your estrogen dominance beyond helping the environmental things, getting rid of those environmental toxins, um, cleaning up as far as getting good quality food and getting good quality water is helping your liver to detoxify these excess estrogens. If your liver is not able to do this properly, estrogens that are meant to go out of the body are going to be recirculated. I see your question, Kylie, just one sec. Estrogens will end up being recirculated and often they've been converted into more harmful forms of estrogen um, that are likely to cause the things that we're experiencing, like the weight gain, like the moodiness, the anxiety, the depression, hostility, the bossiness, the impatience, right? And the bad periods, of course. Um, so really, really, really important if you want to have good results, lasting results with balancing your hormones and getting rid of estrogen dominance and all the associated symptoms is to help your liver. So there's many good liver foods like the cruciferous veggies that we were talking about. Um, like lemon that I have in my hot water right now. Um, anything that's going to help you cleanse. Asparagus, beets are fantastic for the liver. Lots of different things like that. Do you guys know any other liver foods? Um, Tina takes milk thistle. Fantastic. I'm going to talk about herbs right now. Herbs are the best. If you watch any of my live streams before, I probably talk about them every single time. Because I love medicinal herbs and what they can do for women's health specifically. Milk thistle is a fantastic one for the liver because it gently supports the liver. So it's a, a liver tonic, if you will, um, and helps your, your liver to better regenerate and rebuild. Cilantro, yes. And cilantro is also really good for getting rid of heavy metals uh, as well. And good for the kidneys, too. There are other herbs beyond milk thistle that will do a little bit of a deeper clean out of your liver, a little bit more to help you properly metabolize estrogen and excrete the stuff that you don't need anymore um, because that recirculated estrogen can be, often is, deposited in fat, cell, fat cells. And then over time, these fat cells begin to produce their own estrogen. So they become like an endocrine organ all of themselves. Um, castor oil packs on the liver. Absolutely, Chris. This is something I recommend quite often. Turmeric. Fantastic. Bam. Turmeric right there. I take it every day in this tincture for inflammation, liver, gut health, mood, all those things. Other herbs that I want to share with you. Oop, there they are. It's kind of hard to see with the lid on. This is my detox tea. But it's a, a formula that I made to help women detox their livers who have estrogen dominance. And so other herbs that you might look for that I include in the tea that might be good in other formulas you find. Dandelion root, burdock root, um, yellow dock. Uh, we mentioned milk thistle. Uh, I put Vitex in there as well. Um, and cinnamon for balancing blood sugar and raising progesterone. So this formula is specific to you ladies who are watching tonight, by the way. It's a delicious chai-like tea, as you can see. You can get it on thehormonediva.com um, or read all about it. Or just get a formula that's similar to that and take it for a few months. You cook with it a lot. Fantastic, Tina. Amazing. So herbs, diet, natural products. How many of you are getting these estrogen balancing foods every day? Cruciferous veggies. All of that. How does it taste? It's like a chai tea. Tina, because it's got cinnamon and ginger in there um, and dandelion root and those other roots uh, have a really robust flavor that's similar to a chai or like an herbal coffee if you've ever had that. It's really good. I formulate them myself so they taste good because I want to... Um, I want to like it so that I'll actually use it. <laughs> so that's, that's that. Um, terrible veggie eater. Marcella. I know it can be tough when you, when you don't know how to make them taste good, for example. Um, but there's so many ways, right? There's so many ways to get more veggies. 
Um, I have a whole blog post on how to eat more veggies on the hormonediva.com. Go on the search bar and, and search it out. Uh, try every day, but your weight is still growing. How much do you need a day? Of what, Tina? The veggies, the tea, the herbs? What do you... Be specific. Um, the weight can still be growing if you're imbalanced in what you're doing. So you can eat all the veggies in the world, but if you're still not getting enough protein and you're not getting enough fats and you're getting too many carbs of the not right type, then your weight will grow. Um, there's a delicate balance to this. And especially when it comes to fat loss with estrogen dominance, I'm actually working on a 28 day meal plan just for this purpose to help you guys out. Oh, for the tea, um, two to four cups, four cups max. I mean, the more you drink, the faster you'll probably see results but two to four cups. You can make it ahead of time. Um, so I provide instructions on how to make one cup or you can make a quart and keep it in your fridge so you can just reheat it as necessary, whatever is easier for you. Um, it's one of my favorites. It's the most popular tea on the site. I have seven of them. Uh, a close second to the stress tea and PCOS tea, interestingly enough. So what are you guys feeling tonight? Any other questions about this? We're going to talk more about the weight specifically. Um, yeah, I'm excited about the meal plan too, Tina. So it's going to be a 28-day fat loss meal plan for moody women with estrogen dominance. Is that you? Is that you guys? <laughs> I'm creating this just for you because I want you to know how to eat the foods, how to combine the foods in the right way that's going to help you feel better, right? Um, do I have a diet plan? It's coming, Monica. That's what's coming. Um, I believe the release date is going to be the 16th of May. So the official launch date of the meal plan where you can um, grab that for yourself. And 75 plus recipes designed by myself to be delicious and easy and help you get rid of estrogen dominance. Yes, it's gonna be amazing. I'm excited. And you know what I've even done? In the meal plan, I've given you a few different recipes using this tea. There's a soup recipe using this tea as a base. There's a smoothie recipe. There's some really good stuff coming just to help you get more of the detox tea in your body. Yeah, moody because of estrogen. Totally, right? We've all been there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's get that balanced out. Um, I feel like that was the biggest thing for me personally. When I started to change my diet after I learned I had PCOS and when my mood started to change quite quickly within the first two weeks, that is what kept me going. That mood change, I was like, holy shit. I can be a normal, wonderful person. <laughs> And uh, I don't need to be this moody, crazy bitch all the time, right? Because that's so embarrassing, isn't it? When you can't control those things. Totally. I hope I'm not missing any comments because I'm, I'm not doing this from my normal setup. For some reason, my laptop still has no internet, but I have internet on my iPad and my phone. Yeah, totally, Monica, right? Um, so the meal plan's coming, grocery lists, um, recipes, uh, foods to include, foods to avoid, how to meal plan, how to use the meal plan, more info about detoxing estrogen. Um, it's, uh, okay. Um, Kylie, anything you can recommend for hormonal acne? Watch my hormonal acne live stream and search for it on the, um, on the hormonediva.com. Oh my gosh, there's so many comments. <laughs> it's awesome, you guys. I love it. I just have to scroll back up. Uh, so hormonal acne, I want to make sure I don't miss anyone. Clean up your diet. Usually gut imbalances are a big part of this. So detoxing your liver is extremely important. Some of the herbs in that detox tea, um, for example, burdock root and yellow dock when combined are fantastic for skin issues, specifically hormonal acne, um, probiotics, fermented foods, things that I'm going to be including in that meal plan coming out soon, helpful for hormonal acne. Oh, I feel a sneeze. Is it going to come? 
Don't you hate that when it doesn't, it doesn't come? Uh, does that answer your question? A few things to get started. Clean up the diet, get out the dairy, get out uh, the gluten, get out the sugar, right? Um, as far as internal remedies. Uh, is paleo good, Deb? It can be, absolutely, but it's important to pay attention to this because women need carbs. Low carb is not the answer to all weight problems. It's not the answer to all hormonal problems, no matter what some people may, may be putting out there. In my clinical experience, we need the carbs. It stresses out our adrenals and thyroid too much when we go too low carb for too long. And that can happen with paleo. So be careful of that. Make sure you're getting lots of root vegetables, uh, sweet potatoes, potatoes, squash, beets, carrots, turnips, rutabagas, all of those things to make sure you're getting good starch. Nuts and seeds as well. Oh, Monica says this is the best chat she's been on. Oh, thanks so much. That's amazing. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Um, getting through the questions, you guys. Uh, Kate, how long should we wait on any regimen to see changes or wait for changes? Um, a while. Like 12 weeks? Like three months? Um, a lot of times, especially if you make really specific diet changes, like I'm going to outline in the meal plan upcoming, um, you'll see results faster than that. Usually within a couple of weeks, you'll see a bit of a reduction. Usually the mood um, is the first to even out in these types of things. You might notice a little bit less bloating. Um, you might fit into your clothes a little bit better, those types of things. And the meal plan, by the way, is not meant as a fast crash diet it's a meal plan it's a way that you eat for your life to sustainably lose weight to sustainably balance your hormones and your moods all of that um, but especially if you're talking about like supplements for example you want to wait about three months or so um, Marcella I usually take out my mood on my punching bag awesome my mood gets taken out by walking usually I'll put on a podcast Check out the Liberated Woman podcast. You all need to listen to it. My good friend Amber Chalice is amazing. And I've been on the show a couple of times as well. I was um, so fortunate that last year, 2016, uh, one of my episodes was the top one of the year. So check that out, the Liberated Woman. Um, it made me think of that just because of dealing with stress and, and moods and all of that. Um, Tina says, oil cleansing helped with my skin. Absolutely. The oil cleansing method is amazing. I have done it in the past as well. Um, now that I don't get severe acne anymore, I don't do it. Um, but oil cleansing is fan-freaking-tastic for acne issues. Kylie, what about natural sugars and fruits? You'll want to go for the lower sugar fruits, Kylie. Um, oh, Lizelle. She says, when you want to sneeze and it doesn't come, look into a bright light noted and thank you so natural sugars and fruits interesting question go for the low sugar fruits berries of all types cherries um pomegranate cranberries green tipped bananas do i have one here so like this ta-da green tip Oop. green tip this is going down my gullet after this is over um Green tipped. If it's got like the brown spots or it's all yellow, it's way too sugary. Green apples are great. Um, if you're going to eat other fruits, and it's totally fine, by the way, because variety is the spice of life, is it not? Just be mindful of portions. And when you're first beginning your healing, you may want to reduce or eliminate those things completely for about four weeks. Uh, you're welcome. Pumpkin. Yes, absolutely, Marcella. Pumpkin is one of my favorites favorites there's a recipe on my website for this delicious grain-free pumpkin porridge um, I believe the blog post is called the perfect breakfast for balancing hormones something like that check it out it's amazing uh, Tina says I tried low carb and gained eight pounds exactly right a lot of women will find that either they gain weight or they lose weight um, but they can't sustain it and they end up feeling more fatigued or, or whatever than before or Nothing happens at all. Um, so interesting. Marcella, I can't be lo go below 30 to 40 grams of carbs per day. I would not recommend it. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, you got to find your carb sweet spot. And for some people, they can handle more and some do better with slightly less. 
but generally I don't recommend for prolonged periods going below 60 grams of carbs. Um, Deb, I can handle all the symptoms except the migraines. Migraines, move your liver, drink some water, get some fresh air and sweat, and that will help you a lot. Um, Deb, berries, yes, Marcella, oranges, Tina, no, those are quite high sugar, actually. Other citrus, like lemon and lime, is fantastic, but oranges are quite high in sugar, so just be mindful of portions. Um, where can I find out about oil cleansing? Google it. There's loads of good articles out there, Kylie. Just Google oil cleansing method for acne, and you'll find fantastic links. There's really good bloggers that have really um, detailed explanations about how to do it, how to choose the oils you're going to use, all of that. Um, I think that's it so far. Did I get through everyone? <laughs> Any other questions, guys? We've been on for like over an hour. Have I missed anybody? What's going on? Oh, here we go. Oh, whoops. I pressed play on my own live stream. I was about to start listening to myself. Uh, in regards to the water intake and you don't have a filter, what else can you do to get rid of the hormones? Boil it. When you boil water, it concentrates anything that's in it. So if you're someone who boils water in a kettle for tea and doesn't use it all and then reboils it later, that's a no-no. Um, if there's shit in your water, it's just going to concentrate it. Um, get a filter, get a pitcher. Brita won't cut it. Um, I think the Santivia are pretty good. If you have any local springs or you can purchase spring water, alkaline water, reverse osmosis water. Um, there's lots of places usually around that, that carry those things. I'm lucky enough to live by a spring and I have um, plenty of places around me that sell alkaline and reverse osmosis water. Marcella, weight training and cardio workouts. Nix the cardio. If you're trying to do weight loss and change your body composition and your hormones and all that, besides just like regular walking, nix the cardio and just do the weight training. Uh, have I heard of Femara? Letrozole. Is that, is that an estrogen, Kylie? Oh, about the effectiveness? No, I don't think I've ever had a client that's taken it. Is it an estrogen? Am I right on that? Or progesterone? I'm not that familiar. Oh, I'm getting the last of my water out. Almost gone. Oh, estrogen blocker. Like a prescription medication? Or like a supplement? I would say estrogen blockers kind of freak me out. Just like carb blockers or fat blockers or whatever. Because it's not a real fix, right? It's more of a band-aid. Um, why does that not go away? There we go. Um, there are supplements that can help you to detox estrogen. For example, I3C, DIM, which is dil, uh, diindolylmethane. Uh, sulforaphane is another one. There's lots of them. Yeah, so DIM. Yeah, exactly, Marcella. So those are better because they're not blockers. They actually help you to balance estrogen levels versus just blocking it in the first place. Because we need estrogen, right? We can make it out to be the bad guy here, but the truth is it's really not. Um, so if you want to, yeah. Has it helped you, Tina? You take DIM? I find like Vitex, DIM and these similar supplements either help a lot or they don't help at all. In my experience, Vitex and DIM did not do anything for me but I know that they have for, for clients of mine. Um, so it's just kind of stuff that you have to try for yourself, right? How do I, oh. So it's just kind of stuff that you have can to you try for Can you hear me from, <laughs> that's weird. So the only way I can see the comments on this is to listen to myself, that's weird. Yeah, did nothing for you? Then they're not for you, Deb. Focus on the liver. That's what I find works the best. Balance your blood sugar, eat a clean diet, fix your liver, you'll be good to go. I'll show you how to do all of that in the meal plan with food, right? And the tea. Because there's easier, way, really a lot of good ways to get these herbs into the body. Dong Kue helps with my hormonal imbalance. Absolutely, Dong Kue is great. I use that in a couple of my teas, actually. Um... 
the Endo T has Dong Kui. Maybe the PCOS T as well. Oh, that's awesome. I'm so glad you guys are excited. I am too. I've been working so hard on this. It's going to be amazing. Oh, you're welcome, Kylie. Any last questions before we close out tonight? I did want to mention our next live stream. Um, but I don't know if the calendar on my, my iPad is synced. I think it's next Thursday. Um, you're getting the tea. Get the detox tea. Here it is. Whoop. You're trying to help estrogen dominance, get the detox tea, for sure. Um, and in the meal plan, if you choose to use it, I'll show you how to use it, the tea in more ways than just drinking it. Um, so next week on Thursday, May 11th, normally we do these on Tuesdays, but next Tuesday the 9th is my birthday. Um, and I don't do shit all work on my birthday. So uh, I'm going for a massage. I'm going out to breakfast. Uh, I think I'm going to do a little shopping at a local like metaphysical store, get a few crystals and different things for myself. Um, so we're doing anyway. So we're doing the live stream on Thursday, the 11th. We're going to talk more about the weight stuff and the estrogen dominant stuff. And we're going to be talking about why the cardio and boot camps you're doing are making you fat. Well, thanks, Tina. Happy early birthday to me. I'm excited. That's the benefit of working for yourself. Yeah, Taurus season. Are you a Taurus too? Any more Tauruses on this call? <laughs> Any more stubborn bulls on this call? Oh, thanks, Chris. That's so nice. Uh, so we'll talk about cardio and boot camps, why they're making you fat and what you can do instead. Next Thursday, the 11th, same time, 7 p.m. Eastern. Thanks, Marcella. Oh, you guys are so sweet. You guys are so sweet. Thank you so much. Amazing. Yeah, lots of Tauruses. Amazing. Scorpio. My grandmother was a Scorpio. Uh, her birthday was November 5th. Awesome. Yeah, Taurus season. Interesting. And the day after my birthday is a full moon. I'm going to um, a full moon meditation on the 10th, which is going to be super fun. Oh, you're so welcome, Monica. You're so welcome. Um, if there's nothing else, I'll wait one more minute because I know there's sometimes a lag. But if there's nothing else, then I'll see you guys next Thursday. I'm always in the group, so please feel free. Oh, October 31st. That's amazing. Halloween baby. Very cool. Um, so we'll see you next week. Questions, comments? Yeah, hit and strength training. We'll talk about it next week, Tina. Um, it's time to go relax. It's the evening. For me, anyway. It's after 8. If it is for you, get off those screens Get yourself a good night's sleep so that you can release excess weight, right? Absolutely. 7 p.m. Eastern, Monica. Same time we started tonight on the 11th. I'm going to have lots of reminders in the group and stuff like that. So don't even worry. Okay. I'll see you guys next week. Have a great rest of the week. Have a good weekend. Get outside. Get some fresh air. Be happy. I'll see you guys then. Oh, and don't forget about Ishel. You are being healed. You are a healer, right? After eight here, yeah. Okay, bye guys, good night.